Do you have anything in your kitchen or bedroom that's made out of metal? Have you ever thought about where the metal comes from to make those objects? Well, in the 1800s, mining was a huge industry. People used pans, like this one, to scoop rocks out of stream beds and try to separate out valuable nuggets of gold. Welcome to Kanaka Flat, a placer mining camp in the Siskiyou Mountains of Southern Oregon. Placer mining uses some tools to separate out metals from rocks and sand in a stream bed. What you see behind me is a rocker box and a sluice box, both important parts of placer mining. Do you think that miners worked alone or with others? Do you think that they stayed in one place or traveled around? Well, the answer was different for the different communities. The 1849 California Gold Rush attracted locals as well as people who came to the region from very far away. Everyone wanted to strike it rich. Some families chose to make a permanent move while others chose to follow the areas where they had heard the most gold was found. People of all backgrounds were involved in the mining industry, including people of North American, South American, Asian, African, and European origin and descent. Remember how I welcomed you to this place called Kanaka Flat? Kanaka is a Hawaiian word meaning person. And the fact that that word was used tells us something about the community that was here. People of Kanaka Flat included families from Portugal, American Indian families from several tribes, African American families, as well as Hawaiian families. While we don't know very much about the daily lives of most of Kanaka Flat's residents, we do know a few details about a man named George Mao. He was a miner and lived in Kanaka Flat. From marriage and census records, we know that he was Hawaiian and married to Susan, a citizen of the Rogue River tribal nation. Together, they lived in a cabin, perhaps a bit like this one. Here's how George was described in his obituary from the Tidings newspaper on September 19, 1860. George was a man of good intelligence and an honest and industrious citizen and well-respected. He has always worked in the mines around Jacksonville. By the 1870s, Oregon was home to people from around the world who were navigating policies and laws intended to help white Americans and make it more difficult for other racial groups to succeed. Just as Oregon State passed a series of exclusion laws forbidding black people like Letitia Carson from coming to Oregon, Similar laws sought to exclude other racial groups from the opportunity of the American dream as well. While exclusion laws sought to discourage people from coming to Oregon, some people of color came anyway or decided not to leave. Today, Oregonians of color continue to thrive in communities across the state. Mm -hmm.